What's up, everyone? Welcome to Toxic Hustle as we launch our new Harlem Cyberpunk Nights, Volume 1. This is another one of our MG the Future inspired artwork packs. He was talking about he wanted something like Harlem Renaissance, Neo Retro Future, some crazy ish. And I was like, All right. so I like went with Harlem Nights, but then we took it up another notch. And I was like, yo, Cyberpunk Harlem Nights. So that's kind of what this is Harlem Cyberpunk Nights. This way the studios can't come at us. So anyway, what we have in your pack, you got all your packs here. I like, you all know, I like starting with the scenes first. So we can go ahead and start with the scenes. And then this way you can see the scenes and then you'll see all the characters that'll be in those scenes. So first things first, let's start inside, right? We're going to build an outside scene. So I'm going to save that one last. Let's start inside and let's go with the classy, right? So we're going to have the club center stage. So what we're going to do, this area is for like bands, the singers, the uh, anything really, it can be anything, but I really thought of the singers being inside the club and getting that real, uh, retro Harlem feel. Um, you've got, you know, 10 great images in here, all for the club. Then you have the casino, right? Because you know, it's gotta have a gambling casino inside there somewhere. So we've got different versions, you know, got some rustic, um, retro, uh, touristic classy joints. So you've got a different, a bunch of different scenes. You got 10 of those right there. And then of now the one I'm going to be working with is the outside scene. There's a few here. You can see the outside scenes. I will probably be using that one right there. Before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at our characters, right? Because of course the character, so we're going to start like we did before with that club scene and here's the band. So you've got your band, you've got a bass player, an upright player, two upright players, a piano player. There's another bass, right? And the drummers, right? So you got your drummers and then you got a sax guy and a trumpet guy, right? For your, so you've got your band. Now, from the band, of course, we got to have the singers, right? So this is the singers that'll be in the club. So you can make some dope, very dope, very dope imagery with this pack for the inside, right? And, of course, I, like what I'm going to be using is the outside, which is going to be for the gangsters. And the casino, actually. So you got this dude. Got that. Right? Gotta have your bosses. I think I'm gonna go with this guy right here. Oh no, I'm probably gonna go with this guy because I don't want to have a weapon. It's a YouTube video, so I don't want them dinging the video because, oh, it was weapon rare or oh, whatever. All right, so boom, we got this right here. I'm probably gonna use that gangster right there. And then the mob princesses, right? So some of them got pistols. Some of them are just retrofitted with cybernetics or cyber cybernetic suits. Some are just gangster on their own. Some got um, laser daggers. These are laser daggers. So I was like, yo, I want a laser dagger. So you got laser daggers, <laughs> shorty packing the heat, right? All of this, all of the mob princesses got some type of heat on them, man. <laughs> you gotta be a mob princess, come on now. So there we go, we got our mob princess. Before we go into that, let's look at some of our other stuff. We've got some great grunge overlays, one by ones for your square images. Um, you've got your rectangular ones. So we've got these that you can like give it a little texture and some depth, uh, give it a little age. Same rectangular, you can use that for um, those. Uh, we've got neon backgrounds that you can use as just a background, as well as you can use this as color overlay. Um, like things together. I'm going to try to see how that looks in a bit. We'll see how, which one, if, it, if anything pops off with that. I already showed you the scenes and then the cars. So then we have all our cars, all the vehicles for the outside shot. I'm probably going to go with this one. All right. So let's start building out our scene. So this way y'all get a taste of what it looks like to, to the pack to build. So what I'm going to do is I'm in Photoshop. I'm using the beta, nothing different than the other ones other than like some of the AI stuff they've got. 
Um, made a 2000 by 2000 pixel, 72 DPI, that's fine. Um, it's just going to be an image on the web. We don't need it bigger than that. It's not going on the t-shirt or nothing. If any of these, if you want to use any of the, the bricks for t-shirts, my recommendation is blow them up. You can use any of the tools, AI tools to increase the size of it. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. So let's go in this folder. And of course, we're going to need a scene. The outside, because I want to park one of the cars. And I kind of like here. I think that'll stand out on a, vid on a video, on an, um, out for the video image itself. So there we go. We've got that. Now I've got the outside, right? Let's, uh, a car, because I want the car first. Do I want this one? Or do I, no, I want this one. That should be that just there. Of course, we got to blow that up just a bit, right? Because it can't just be there. It's got to be there. We go. There we are. Well, we'll do that later. All right. So now what's next? Let's we need our characters, right? We gotta have our characters. We gotta go with the mob princess first, and I want the one with the saber. Well not saber, the um dagger, the laser dagger. Wow. Right? Uh now we need to come over here and get one of the gangsters. One uh, I wanna use. I don't want to use one with a gun because of YouTube, so I'll use you because you kind of fit in a bit. Seemingly. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag him behind her and then blow him up a bit more. Right, right there. That just, wow. There we are. See what I'm saying? So now we've got our character. We've got the car. We've got our, our people. Everything already looks like it fits. You know what I mean? Let's go ahead and move on to the next thing that I want to add. Let's see. Uh, do I have some run? Not yet. Let's, do, let's go ahead and get our font in there. Now, for the font in the readme file that I send you inside the folder, so let's pull open the folder. You'll see that there's a readme text. In there, I have two fonts. I got... Cells, Nick, and then there's Quicksand. These are the URLs for them. I've already installed mine. So let's go ahead and get the text tool. And like I told you, it's called Cells, Nick. So I just copy that. Just pop that right in. I've already. There we go. Gotcha. So now I want to put. Um, who's this? I like making sure that I just copy and paste because then you don't worry about um, things that way. And I'm going to put this here. All right. Control. Enter. Right, V gets in here, control T, because I want to scale it out. I'm holding Alt and dragging it out. Um, another thing can do is I'm going to hit control and A. That's going to put this border on. And then click up here once you're on the move tool, and it automatically will give you these tags that you can center. I actually don't need it centered up and down. I don't know, but I did need it centered left and right, which I pushed there and got it centered. So now we've got it up here. Now, uh, I want to put my MG inspired art into it, right? And then the other text I said was, oops, it's here. Quicksand. All right, so let's go with quicksand. Pop that right here. Called. You, oops, you, you. Uh, quicksand. Oh. Just want to cover. Ah, there we go. Book. Or light. I'll go with. Yeah. It's a thin type font. 
And then I'm going to drop this down to, say, 48. Uh, let's get him at, let's say, keep it at 60. Oh, shit. No, we go 17. 100? I guess 100. All right, we'll go with 100 on this. I'm just going to control V, M, G, space, uh, future. All right. And again, control A. Oops. Sorry, control enter. So I want to get that uh, control A so that I can get the border up here. Hit V so I get the move tool. Center that on here like that. Control D to just deselect, and then I can now just drag this where I want. Actually, let's bring this down a bit. All right. I think that that's good. So now we've got our text. All right. We've got our text. We've got our people. Everything's cut out for you already, so it looks clean. That's what makes designing with this pack really easy and you can just concentrate on what you're trying to bring forth so now since we have this do i want it to be this color nah you know what let's pick up some of the colors that come from his jacket so this way we can tie it in here a little bit let's see what that looks like so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna cl click on the cyberpunk column night um down here your effects palette i one want to do a drop shadow because i can barely see the text and I want it to jump off the page. So let's go with a drop shadow, the opacity. I want to turn it up. You're starting to see it right on the edges. Uh, this, I will put it up to like, because I don't want it too far from it. And the spread, I think I can crank that up just a little bit. Yeah. That... All right. So now we have that. Perfect. I just hit OK. And, oh, and then I need to change the color Um, that right here underneath the properties for the type layer. You can see that the color's right there. I'll just click on it. It'll give me the color picker. And then see what I can do right there. I can just choose one of the colors straight from his jacket. And that's cool. Now. I want to take this up a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a bit of a stroke as well. Pause. And turn it down. To one. Yeah, two is fine. And then what I want to do is pull like one of this light blue right on the edges. Maybe even a white. Like a light. There we go. That seems interesting, but I might not want to stroke. Actually, hold on. This might be one of those times where that's not the play. Actually, an outer glow play. Turn off this. Turn off. Turn off that. Turn on the outer glow. Put it on normal. Hit this so I can get the color movement. Choose one of these colors right here. And then hit the spread just a bit and the size just a bit. That's it. Yep, that's exactly what I needed. So this way there's just, a, again, more separation from it. And because of the opacity is the way it is, like I could hit it all the way up, but it loses the little drop shadow. What I want is just a little bit of a glow in the text. And I'm going to go with close to the white. There we go. Just a touch. And actually, I think I can go with a bevel emboss too. Shoot. Let's do that. Let's see what happens when we do that. Let's go back. Let's go with a bevel and emboss. And then hmm, 
I don't see no one up. I'm just gonna turn that off. And hit OK. Actually, I just hit undo and got rid of it. I'm gonna also kill the outer glow just a bit. I don't want it distracting. And I need that, actually, I want that drop shadow to be a little bit more. Ah, I see what's happening. The drop shadows kill it. The glow is killing the other stuff. Okay, so I'm going to not do that. What we're going to do is we're going to keep it simple. Outer glow is killing it. Let's go down a drop shadow. And now I don't need that distance there. Spread down. Size is fine. And if I put bevel emboss back on, ah, so it was the outer glow killing the bevel and emboss. Gotcha, gotcha. So there we go. Now we get a little bit of the stuff we were looking for. And on the bevel and emboss, I don't want green. What I want is vivid light. So that gives it a little bit more sheen inside the color, but not white. It uses the actual color. There we are. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of that sharp. That I think three. Yeah, I think three is it. All right. So there we go. We've got our cyberpunk. Our opacity is down. Our distance is down. That's the shadow. And the outer glow. I'm going to do soft light. And then just not to affect it too much. There we go. Right? Dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now let's try a All right, all right, all right, all right. I think we can do something like that. Let's now fix the bevel and emboss on this. Because I want it to stand out. It was sinking in there too. All right, so let's go with the depth. Put that depth up a little bit more. I don't think inside. No soft and necessary. I like that. All right, so we've got that. And on the MG inspired art, I'm just going to put a drop shadow on that just to let it jump off the page. So let's go to drop shadow. And then you'll notice automatically we've already begun jumping off the page. Where the R, you can see it right there where it blends in too much. I drop that in there and all of a sudden you can see it. But what we want to do is we want to tighten this up. So I want to tighten up the size because this is not the same as this text up there. So I'm bringing it down some. I'm going to bring out the spread a little bit more. And the distance, not too much from what I got. So I'm going to turn up the opacity just to have it burn in a little bit more because I'm using burn. I'm burning it into the background. So it keeps the colors, but burns it in a little bit more. So now we've got our, our make sure that these are, that this text at least is centered 
right on this last number. And then I'll drop it down just a little bit to have a little bit of space. So not too far. All right. That looks like it's right. So now we've got it. We've got a Harlem Cyberpunk Nights Volume 1. We've got MG Future Inspired Art. Now, we have all of this. So what I'm going to do is what I like to do is I'm going to grab all my entire scene and throw it in one thing and just call this the full image. Right? So now I got everything here covered. And not covered, but have it all locked in one big old box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put another box and I'm going to put overlay. Floral. Right? Overlays. Now I can throw any of my backgrounds and or my overlays on top of this. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try a one by one since I have a rectangle and I want to get some color into this picture. Right? I want to use this. Let's see if this, what it does. Right? So we're going to do this. I'm going to drag it all the way out. All right, so now we have it covering the entire image. I'm going to drag that right into my overlays. And in here, I can now choose. Yeah. All right. Screen. Ah, screen is nice. So you can use these different. All right, I can use it as an overlay. I like. Screen. I like screen because it brings up some of the, the stuff I'm going to do now is just turn it down. All right. So now it gets just a little bit of that over everything that's going on. I don't know if I'll keep it or not. We'll see. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is try out one of my. Uh, grunge up as a one by one and I don't want to go with cracks on this one I'm okay with it just being done like this where the center still looks bright because the white area is what's going to be what we're going to keep and then the other area is what we're going to lose and what I'm going to do is I could keep it as a frame like this or I can keep dragging it out till it touches the entire area like that and now what I can do is, again, go through and see which one of these looks well with it. I kind of like multiply, but let's just keep looking. Color darker is nice. All right. No, I don't think any of the lighting's going to work. Overlay is kind of interesting, but I, I don't like how sharp everything gets. I do kind of like the soften. No, not the vivid. Okay. So what we've got is. Either the darker is kind of interesting, or just the white little speckles in it. But that might, let's see what happens if I do this with reducing the opacity, right? Let's, let's do that. Let's reduce opacity while we are working. Let's see. I don't think, I don't think this, yeah. it might be overlay. I like how the picture crisps up. I don't have those little white spots. Now it's do I want this or this over? Because with this effect, I'm muting out the light paths that I had in there. And if I flip it, I keep some of that, but I lose some of my overlay. I kind of want to keep this to center the eyes right into the... And I think that's it. I think we have a dope little picture. I do want to work on my text a little bit because what I might end up doing is doing something a bit different, which is take my text that I have here and instead of it being affected by any of those, I'm going to drag it all the way to the top and throw it above the over. So now the text itself will not be affected by anything else going on over it. It sits on top of everybody. And then that's it. I think that's it. So this 
is just one way of using the packs and you see me do it live, this is how I, I, can, I can just design something really fast and then roll that out as a product um, uh, so well for you. Um, you can use it in your music product, your video products. You can use it for, um, for manufacturing. You'll just have to scale up your imagery. Um, there's plenty of, of brands that can do that. Um, so thank you, Chance, a moment to check out this latest pack, this new MG The Future Inspired Art. We appreciate you and, and hope that this works great for your business. Until next time, this is Jay Tragic Jeffrey for Toxic Hustle Media. I'll see you later.